What's up, guys? So this is actually just a replay of the live that I did Valentine's Day weekend. During this live, there's so many good questions that came up, and essentially I spent about an hour answering any BMX question that somebody typed in the chat. There's a lot of good information in there, so watch the whole thing and take away a lot of key notes that they're there's a lot of things in there that are going to make you a better bike rider if you pay attention. We use some finger bike examples, we talked about some projects I'm working on, different bike advice, and there's just over an hour of goodies in there. So if you want to come hang out with the next live, go down to my channel, scroll all the way to the bottom and click get notified when I go live because it's every single Friday but the times kind of vary. So I really hope I see you there and enjoy the live. The Dumpster Bomb Mission. Growing BMX by making it fun and easy to understand. For some of us, it's an escape. For others, it's a passion. But for all of us, it's a lifestyle. You're gonna love this sport. I'm glad you're letting me teach you everything that I know about it. Okay, well, what's up guys? Um, so yeah, I guess I messed up a little bit on the the live. I said it one night, I was going to bed and I must have said it for 10 in the morning instead of 11. <sighs> Sorry, my bad, my bad. You guys are awesome. Aiden hung out the whole hour and um, what color should we do here for the lights? Aiden hung out for the whole hour, so shouts outs to Aiden. Uh, appreciate you. Can you guys hear me? Is my mic working? So crazy story. If it's, let me know if you can't hear me. Otherwise, I'm just gonna assume you can. Um, I bought this camera to film the videos, and then I was gonna set it up so that I could film the lives with the camera, and I would have to use Cam Link. And the camera films in 4K, and I think it would destroy the internet if I did the live in 4K. It like wouldn't upload. And if I did it at 1080, it would crop the thing. So I'd have to like set my camera way, way, way far away. So anyway, I'm going to record this live. Um, I had to go to Best Buy and get a, a SD card. But I'm going to record this whole live and then publish it as its own video as the live instead of publishing this one. Because I know this one gets um, the quality cuts in and out pretty bad um, during the live. So... The lives are going to get higher quality and um, everything else. I, I'm having not very much fun messing with it. So I have this mic. This is the mic that I've been using. It's not very good. It's like 20 bucks. But I just bought look at this, some fancy headphones, some fancy mic. Um, and the idea was, this is XLR, so it's like real good cable. The idea is that I would run this to the camera for the live and everything and it'd just be really good audio. Um, anyway, I, I don't have the right cables, so this is just going to sit in a box for a while, sadly. Uh, you guys are going to have to deal with this audio for now. Um, anyway, that's about it. That's, that's the update. One thing that I'm really excited about is that now on YouTube, um, the channel can go live uh, from my phone. So when we're out riding, I can go live and then we can film some stuff. Um, you guys can call out tricks. You can just kind of hang out at the park with us. I saw Isaac was talking in the chat a little bit earlier about how it's negative 60 with the wind chill in Canada, right? You're in Canada, right, Isaac? And so obviously he's not getting out and riding. So uh, I can film the sessions and Isaac can be a part of that with us when we're out riding because it's like, look at this. You see the sun out there? It's it's like 60 degrees right now. I got a, a nice farmer's tan going on, even in the winter. So I will film that. You guys can hang out. We'll do some more lives and really excited about it. Um, let's see, who do we have here? This chat is so long. Um, I think Sophie emailed me. Appreciate it um, because I, like I said, I was super late. Um, just start throwing your questions in the chat and I will get to those. I'm going to catch up and read through some of these. So we got Lucas, we got Aiden, we got Isaac, we got Houston. Who else is in here? Um, I just saw Dallas, I think. Javangels, Javangels. 
I think he is new. Welcome to the live. Thanks for hanging out with us, man. You're going to have a lot of fun here. Uh, Senio, Dallas, Cole, Amory, Fatburger, Tony. What's up, guys? Um, I'm glad you guys are all here. Throw your questions in. As you guys start throwing those questions in, I want to talk a little bit about another project I've been working on. You're probably like, hey, you should finish one of your projects before you do another one. But that's not how I roll. Um, this has been an ebook I've been wanting to write for, for a really long time. And it's, it's more so around the psychology of progression and the fear that we face when we're writing BMX. Because learning a new trick is scary. And sometimes it's really hard to progress. It gets confusing when you look at some people. You look at... I can think of friends that I ride with, right? And it's like they're just naturally insanely talented. They're able to hop on the bike and learn way faster than me, way faster than anyone else. And over the last year, I spent the whole year reading a, or listening to a ton of audiobooks. And a handful of those were on like human psychology, flow state, stuff like that. So I'm taking what I learned from that and kind of correlating it to BMX. And I'm, it's crazy some of the stuff I've, I've like connected. So there's a thing, um, Ren Ren, one of the guys that does my, my BMX coaching, he reached out to me and said, hey, I had 360s really dialed and now I can't do them anymore. And it was funny because I just wrote this chapter on the trick cycle. So it's essentially the cycle of our tricks. As we learn tricks, there's a cycle that we go through. And it goes along with how confident we are in the trick and how competent competent we are in the sport. So how much we actually understand about it. Um, I'll show you this on here. Let's see, where, where's the camera? Can you see this? It might be backwards. But essentially, you start right here, okay? where you don't know anything about the trick, you do a ton of attempts and you get more confident. Eventually you land your first one, you're super confident. But has it ever happened to you guys where you land a trick and then a couple weeks later you cannot get that trick again? You try, 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 try. It happened to me with whips. I landed my first whip and I was stoked and then for the life of me, I could not get it. Maybe once a week I would land one and that's trying every single day. So anyway, this kind of writes about how the pros overcome that and this dip right here this flat part this is where a lot of people quit because they get discouraged they feel like they're not good enough and and stuff like that so writing about stuff like that has just been i don't know it's been a lot of fun so i'm really excited to get this done and get it out to you guys i'm on chapter three i have five thousand words written so far and there's going to be 11 chapters so i'll talk about that a little more as it develops but it's gonna be a lot of fun. So that's one thing I'm working on. The other thing is all this camera nonsense. Um, let's see, I saw a question in here earlier, but Lucas said he can throw water in the air and watch it turn to snow. I think a handful of these guys had to get out of here and go back to school. Fair enough. Um, all right, let's see. Somewhere I gotta find YouTube and then uh, I will answer some questions. Houston says, Source BMX has ankle braces finally back in stock. Um, are you talking about the Space Brace? The Space Brace 2.0s are super nice. That quick release that they have is, is a game changer for sure. Um, okay. So this is like the one of the first lives I didn't have questions prepared and nobody's asking questions. So yikes. Anyway, there's lots of questions on the YouTube comments that I have not answered. So I will get into that. Okay, Dennis Wilson says, what do you think? I was wanting the Sunday Scout. I'm 5'11", about 160 pounds. I used to ride bikes back in the day in the desert by my house, but I thought it would be fun to try skate park and desert. I never did much tricks back in the day. I just hook jumps. What do you think? I'm not aiming to be pro, but just have some fun with my friends. I've been skateboarding, but rode as BMX and seems like a lot of fun. All right, Dennis, BMX is a lot of fun. I'm glad that you realize that. Let me, I'm pretty sure the Sunday Scout is a smaller frame size, but I have to double check. Um, 
I'm pretty sure it is. And you, you for your height, you need a 20.75 or a 21 inch. I would not go with anything smaller than a 20.75 just because it's going to be really hard for you to control. And I'm a liar. The Sunday Scout's a 21 inch, so that is good. Um, overall, though, I I don't know. It's it's only got chromoly down tube and chromoly dropouts, so it's kind of low quality. But from the sounds of it, you don't need anything super high quality because you are just going to be riding a little bit. Now, if you have the money and you want to get a $500 bike, I'd go with the Cult Devotion for your height and for what it sounds like you want to do. It's a lot bigger frame geometry, um, like the chain stays 13.6, so it's going to be really controlled for you. Um, but it's going to be a little more expensive. So that's what I would go with. I think it's awesome that you are getting back into the sport. I, I talked to so many different um, older guys that are looking for a bike because they rode back in the day and they just want to get back into it. So that's awesome. Um, if you have any questions, just keep keep commenting them and we will get to it. Um, Isaac says that he has to ride in the garage. Fair enough, fair enough. Isaac also landed foot jam whips. Good job, Isaac. Super stoked. Um, I told him to send me a video on Instagram so I could check it out. It's crazy for me thinking back to when I first tried them. Like it was something I, I tried when I first started and then I could not land it. It took me so long to actually get it around and get my feet back on. So that's a big accomplishment, man. Um, Fat Burger says, all right, Doug, I'm trying to get a new bike and was going for a kink whip, but kink aren't restocked. But yesterday I was offered a full custom with about 2K in parts for less than the kink. But dot, 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 I'm scared as it's not going to suit me as I'm 168 centimeters. It has 20.6 pass DK passport frame. And it also took over. Oh, it's all over five years old, so I feel like it's going to break on me, even though he said it's been lightly used. Um, that, that's kind of tough, because it could be very lightly used, but it could also not be. I mean, you can tell by looking at it. The one thing I'd say is that bike value does not really hold, so... Every single year, they're coming up with like new little tweaks in technology, new innovations here and there. So the quality is constantly getting a lot better. So something that would cost 2K um, five years ago is I wouldn't pay more than 200 bucks, maybe 250. And that would just be to get you rolling until you can get something like the kink whip. Another thing that changed over the last five years is the geometry. So way back, the chain stays would be like 14 inches where the kink whip is closer to 13 and what else the bars are probably a lot lower on that bike than what you would get on the kink whip and the reason the geometries progressed over time is because it's so much easier to progress with it um, that bigger geometry it, it's just the whole game's changed so people are a lot more technical now and not necessarily so concerned about going really high like they might have been back in the day so you've got to take that into consideration this one is going to be a little bit it's just gonna probably feel big even though it's a 20.6 inch six inch top tube um, but yeah I wouldn't spend more than 250 even if it is lightly used and the kink I swear they should be coming back very soon but I don't actually know because I emailed a guy that I talked to who does their marketing uh, his name's Jake and I just checked in, you know, told him Happy New Year and stuff and told him I was super stoked for the 2022 line. And he said he'll keep me updated as soon as it comes out. And I know for a fact that they're already in the works on that. So maybe they're not even going to do a 2021 uh, re-up and they're just going to switch to 2022. That's all speculation because I don't actually know. But generally, I think they do another drop right before Christmas. And then after that, they start working on the, the next line of bikes. So if you can't wait that long, go with the DK, but try and hustle them down to like 200 bucks. That's what I would do. Um, what else we got here? 
Prithi, Prithvi, what's up, man? Glad you are back. I remember you from the last live. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for hanging out. Um, Prithvi says, my friend wants to get into BMX, but he pri prioritizes color of size. Okay, color over size because he doesn't think top tube length matters because they're small intervals. How do I convince him that it's important? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I, I used to be the same way. So for me, it's going to make your progression a lot easier. That's the best thing you can tell him. And the only way for him to actually figure that out is to, to ride and see that you're right. Um, for me, when I started out, I got a 19.5 inch bike and I was 13. I was probably close to six foot at the time. Um, and, and that bike is way too small. Even at 13, I should have been on like a 20 inch or a 21 inch, my bad. So, and here's what happened. One, it was pretty easy to control just being smaller, but the actual execution of tricks was so different. I probably rode a 20.5 up until I was uh, late teens and could already do bar spins and 360s and stuff. But what happened once I got on a bigger bike that was actually proper for me, my tricks quit looking so sketchy and they actually looked good. Um, it's like th the style factor came into play. So you can still learn tricks on a smaller bike. Now, a bigger bike, if you get a bike that's too big for you, that's where it's going to really hinder your ability. Um, but you're going to look goofy on a really small bike if you're really tall. So... I don't know. That's just something he's going to have to figure out on his own. It's like you, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You know, have you heard that saying? You can tell him until you're blue in the face, but he's just got to figure that out. Um, I think I did a video on it, on whether or not it matters, but I don't know how in depth I, I honestly can't remember. I'm 90% I'm sure I did, but that's a good question. Prith, Prith V. I hope I'm saying your name right, man. I say it every live and, and, uh, <laughs> Dallas says, how old are you guys? Dallas, I don't think Dallas is talking to me, but I'm 24. I'm going to be 25 in September, uh, and it's stressing me out. I feel like um, I was just talking to my to Barrick about that. We were at the skate park, and he's two years older than me. So when I started riding there, I was 16. He was 18, and to him, I was an annoying little kid, and then we became like best friends over time. But it, he's telling me a story. <laughs> he's at the skate park sitting there. He had his hat off. He's balding. Um, he's 28. He's balding. I think he's 28, 27. I don't know. Um, anyway, he's balding. And a kid came up and said, do a trick. And before Barrett could even tell that kid, like, yes or no, another kid came up and asked the first kid if that was his dad. He's like, is that your dad? <laughs> and uh, Barrett, Barrett was pretty hurt by it. And we talked about how back in the day, we were the younger kids riding with Chase and Mike and these guys that are... Um, they were in their mid twenties. Now they're in their thirties and now we're the older guys and there's younger kids. It's, it's so weird to me. Um, I don't know why I'm talking. Oh, I'm, uh, I was like, why am I talking about that? But, um, yeah, it's super weird. But Seno says I'm trying one eighties right now. Every time I try to turn around, instead I jump to the side and completely stop. Why? You know, honestly, send me send me a clip of you trying it on uh, on Instagram at Dougster Bob, and then just send it to Dougster Bob, and I'll look at it and I'll I'll try and see because that to me that's kind of confusing. Every time you try to turn around, instead you jump off to the side. Um, I don't know. From what it sounds like, one double check that you can bunny hop pretty good. Two, bunny hop pretty good. And just make sure you're turning your head and sucking your knees up. If you're popping and doing the 180, but your bike is staying the same and you're just popping over, then you're, you're not bringing your bike with you. Um, but send me a clip and I'll look at it and try and help you out a little bit more. Isaac says, I landed the beginner kind of foot jam whip. Now I'm trying to learn thread kind, but yeah. So that's how I go along. Do, do, do. Jeff finger bike. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and I'd swing my foot over and then foot jam and then like that. And that way is okay because it gives you the concept of you have to shift your weight forward and back to get the whip around. Um, but what happens 
when you start to do it for real, it gets a lot harder because you have to pop up like a nose manual, swing that foot over at the same time and catch. And uh, that's hard. That is very hard. So it takes a lot of practice. You are one step closer because you landed it the beginner way. So good job. Still good job. Um, oh, Marvin's Marvin. What's up, Marvin? Glad you're back in the live. Uh, Marvin's giving Seno Senio some advice, and he says before you jump, you need to carve in the direction you're spinning. That's some pretty good advice. Carving is going to be. It's definitely the best way to learn it, but as you start to progress a little more, you need to. Um, learn how to do it without carving because there's going to be some situations where you do not want to carve. Like if you start to a 360 a box jump, carving is going to kill you sometimes. Um, but learning on flat carving is great. You have to learn how to carve but still stay straight too, if that makes sense. But that's like level level 300. You guys are just starting out, so that's solid. Keep working on it. Uh, Aiden says, my friend says I'm too short to foot plant. I know we talked about foot plants earlier in the last live. Um, did anyone actually go land them? Isaac says he can't foot plant. Um, hmm, interesting, interesting. You guys got to keep working on it. Um, I'm, I'm rooting for you to land a foot plant. So <laughs> I'll, I'm going to go film today with my new camera. We're going to get some clips. I'll do foot plants. And what was the... Uh, Mizaki from Mizaki I have to do a jump with a Pringle right is that what it is bunny hop with Pringles okay so I still have to do that I'll film that and the uh, the foot plant let's see Lucas is back hello again Lucas oh god you guys are popping off on the chat I'm behind already uh, appreciate it I love it I love it Isaac says, I ride a 21. I'm only 5'5". Five five. It's very large and kind of hard to control. Yeah, so on that real quick, when I hurt my knee a while ago, so I just put on a different frame to mess with it. I went from a 21 to a 20.7, and double whips were so, so easy, but I could only air about half as high as I normally could. So my, my control just went completely down the drain by going down to a shorter top tube. But... Whipping it around was super easy. So you just have to figure out like a happy medium that works good for you. Lucas. What's up, Lucas? Lucas says, yo, I ordered a Fly Fuego frame. What are your thoughts on it? So we actually, I think we talked about the Fuego in the last live. Um, oh my God. I, I want to say it's, it's Devin Smiley's, but I don't think that's right. Is it? I have to double check. It's a, it's a really responsive frame. But fly frames are so, so high quality. But with that comes, oh, it is Devin Smiley. Awesome. Um, with that high quality comes a little bit of weight. So the top tube gussets keep it from cracking on the top tube. The down tube gussets keep it from cracking on the down tube. And I, when I review the fly complete bikes, I'm always blown away by how much quality they're able to put into a complete bike. And I know that their aftermarket frames are just solid. I'm looking at the metallic red color right now and it, it looks absolutely beautiful. What color did you get? So yeah, so the chain stay is 12.8, which is pretty short. It's going to feel really responsive. The head tube angle is 75 degrees, 75.5. So most frames are 75. The 0.5 is steeper. It brings the front wheel closer to the back wheel and gives you a shorter wheelbase, but it also puts the wheel more directly under you, which is going to mean when you pop up into a nose manual, it's a lot easier to get into, but kind of harder to control. Steering also with that is going to feel really snappy and really responsive. Um, so yeah, so think about how Devin Smiley rides. The geometry is designed to kind of replicate that, or Garrett Reynolds. Um, this also says that the Fuego 2 frame comes in brakeless version only. So I hope you don't plan to ride brakes. I have to take a water drink. Hey, real quick, I just had to jump in and remind you that if you haven't liked this video, hit the like button because it really helps me out. All right, back to the video. Look, this is how much I've drank so far. I'm way behind. I try and drink a gallon a day. Do you guys drink water? Or are you like, uh, 
what's his name? Tom Dugan, who's, who doesn't drink water and only drinks Dr. Pepper. Oh, I forgot I could pin the comments too. This Here, now I can pin the comments that I'm talking about, I think. I just tried to pin Jeff's. Jeff says, what's the difference if I have a 21-inch top tube, 13.25-inch chain stay versus 21.25-inch top tube and a 13-inch chain stay? The wheelbase is technically the same, and I assume the pedals are in different spots. I don't think so. The way um, the connection points, I mean, it goes off of all the different angles, but essentially the connection point for the chain stay is still going to connect to the bottom bracket and then the length is going to go out from there. So if the chain stay gets longer, it's going to get longer from this end. And same with the, the top tube. Now, I think there's like seat stay angle and stuff like that. Um, what is that angle right there? Seat tube angle. So that seat tube angle is going to also affect your your top tube length. So like right here, this angle, I don't know if you can see that, but it's this is your seat tube and then your chain stay right here so that angle right there is 71 on most things and if it gets steeper then it it pushes out the chain stay a little bit and it pushes out the top tube a little bit but the pedals and everything still going to stay the same uh, that's a really good question if the wheelbase is the same that's yeah so that's still going to feel the only things that are affected are the chainstay and the top tube, unless it's the same, but then it has a steeper head tube angle or something like that, which brings it in even closer. Like, my, I have a friend who knows way too much about the, the geometries. Like, he's designed four different layered frames and ordered them custom made and everything. And he's like, no, I, I got like, like one degree different so that it would feel like this. And I'm like, dude you're you're overthinking it but now that i get into this stuff with you guys i'm like you know maybe he's not overthinking it because <laughs> it does really help like getting specs that are perfect for you is it helps you so much it's crazy um jeff solid question jeff and i had a good little brainstorm session yesterday morning about everything that i'm working on super solid guys helped me out with a lot of good ideas that i have coming up so um follow jeff <laughs> shouts out <laughs> um let's see what else do we have m miss m shosh i don't know um this person i'm gonna pin the comment i'm sorry spell it out for me so i can say your name right because i feel bad not not being able to say it um is beginner free coaster or cassette it really depends i think a lot of beginner riders end up on a free coaster on accident and then just kind of figure it out. To me, it's very important to be able to ride both. So with a free coaster, you're not going to rely on pedal pressure as much as you would with a cassette. So you're going to have to adapt your tricks or learn tricks differently. A lot of guys who started out on free coasters and then just progress without, without ever riding a cassette have a hard time with, say, tire taps on a quarter because... To do a tire tap on a quarter with a free coaster you really have to have exquisite balance you have to be able to pop on and just balance perfectly um so either one is is fine but figure out them both because they really affect your riding style a lot like in different ways so yeah so yeah i i don't need to go super in depth on that i think that makes sense uh, Lucas says, is it the Fuego 7? Lucas says, cassette. Um, Aiden turned in his test. Everyone say, good job, Aiden. I hope you get an A. Good job, Aiden. Um, <laughs> Aiden says, Doug, will you be my Valentine? Um, yeah, if you buy me uh, a mixing board for, for my podcasting stuff, um, get me that as, as my Valentine's Day present and we'll be solid. NV Neverender says, what's up, Neverender? Glad you are here. Did you ever try and come ride with us? I'm going back up tomorrow and I think we're going to do regionals in Diana. Come ride. It's a lot of fun. 
Um, he said, was someone looking for a kink whip online earlier? The answer to that is yes. I think it was Fat Burger. Um, if he's still here, I don't know if he had to go or not. Um, Aiden says, is the Donna Street... Oh, I'm going to pin it. Hold on, hold on. Is the Donna Street tire better than the Donna Squeak? Um, I'd have... Let me double check because I really can't remember... Um, they were both BSD. I tried to spell squeak and I can't spell it. <laughs> um, BSD makes really good stuff. Hold on. But I really can't remember what the difference is. I mean, the Donna squeak, I feel like is still a street tire and so is the Donna street. They're both Kevlar which means they're folding tires, they're really strong, and they're a lot lighter as Kevlar. Um, so let's see, what? Honestly, they're just like a little different um, compound. So the Donna Squeak tires are gonna be a little better for park because they have a really low rolling resistance on that center section you can see. And the knobbies on the side make it okay for dirt. So I'd say the Donna Squeaks are more well-rounded tires while the Donna Streets are more focused on street. They look like they're gonna slip out um, on park after they're worn out because the only real grip things they have are those little knobs, little teeny tiny knobs on there. So over time it's gonna get worn out. It's still gonna grip on street, but like a slippery skate park would not be very fun. Lucas says, I learned a lot from you. Thanks for all the information. Lucas, that means a lot, man. Um, I Sometimes I get like super excited when I see an email from somebody that says, dude, you've helped me so much, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wow, that is so nice. Ooh, Prithri, Prithvi wants a wrench. I love BMX wants a wrench. I know you guys have, I've seen you guys here, here a few times. Aaron Laird, what's up, man? Glad you are here. Um, hold on, I'm getting caught up. I need to think of a, a little contest to do to give away some more wrenches. I'm not sure how to do it yet, but um, Drew says, I recently bought a 2018 Sunday Morris. I'm wondering if it is good enough quality. Drew, you just, I'm not sure what your skill level is. Um, the Sunday Blueprint's a really low quality bike. So it's good for like, I'd say a brand new rider. But once you start to learn tricks like 180s, 360s, um, foot jam, tail whips, things like that, you should step it up just a little bit because it's going to be a little bit, it's going to start to break over time. It's good for getting you into the sport, learning bike control, and then, um, then progressing from there. So I'm not sure what stage you're at right now, but if you're at the stage for, uh, where you're starting to do higher end beginner tricks, then it'd be a good idea to start to look for something else. Or just wait until parts start breaking because it's inevitable as you progress parts are going to break so you might get to a point where it's a lot easier to just buy a new bike instead of upgrading the one that you have all right i'm reading these i'm looking for a question and then i will uh answer it marvin says i finally balled out and bought the 2021 fly omega white cassette marvin good job dude um the omega is a super nice bike you're gonna love it i have like a little bike over here i keep knocking it over dan the man what's up dan the man guys there's so many of you right now i love it i love it um Um, doo -doo -doo. okay okay I'm caught up to where I was now now I'm, I'm still reading Lucas says to give I love BMX a wrench um, hmm I should I should I should but I'm thinking I need to figure it out how the wrenches work once I start doing like more live events or, or more lives I don't know I've, I've given out so many I feel like I need to start being more picky but I do see I Love BMX in here more. All right, you guys let me know if I should give I Love BMX and Prithvi the wrench. 
just comment it when I get to your comments. We will decide. Okay. Um, Landon says, your BMX setup. Landon, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, are you asking me what my setup is? Or are you asking Prithvi? I don't know. Um, what do you guys think, brakeless or brakes? I used to ride brakes when I started and before every trick, I'd pull the lever just to kind of slow down. And I was like, this is a bad habit. So I took them off. And then it's it's so di it's so crazy how your style is got. It has to be different when you have brakes, when you have a cassette, when you have a free coaster. Like all these little things tweak how we ride and how we progress. Um, I think brakeless riders have a lot more control because they have to learn how to control their speed without the, the assist of brakes but braked riders can do a lot more variety of tricks so i don't know what do you guys think lucas puts brakes whenever he rides dirt and that's actually a really good idea i remember going to a, a dirt park it's called our arvada no it's in denver it's not arvada arvada is a park um god i'll think of it but it's south denver anyway it's dirt so there's um dirt jumps and then there's a downhill mountain bike course and we're riding the dirt jumps having a good time my friends were like hey let's go ride this and i'm like yeah i don't know and chase is like no 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 you're fine follow me so whatever we drop in on the big section and we're going and you get going fast and so we're, we're going really fast and then we hit this long jump and i land back tire heavy and i loop out i try to run it out i take like two steps and just slam and slide down i got my whole arm it was it ruined the trip for me to be honest um zero four out of ten experience um it was really fun until i crashed but if i had brakes i could have pulled the brakes and dropped that front wheel and i would have would have survived but sadly i did not have brakes so that is a very good idea lucas Black 187187 is back. What's up, man? Glad you're here. I saw you comment on uh, something before the live. I can't remember what it was, but um, glad you're here. Got any questions? Pop them in there. I, Ajina Chin Azong, I hope I said that right, says, can you crank arm? I absolutely cannot crank arm. Um, I think if I focused on street, I'd be a better rider, to be honest but that that kind of thing scares me i just don't see how they balance on just their crank arm like i know my back end would drop out like that and i'd hit my butt on the rail and just have a, a zero out of ten time uh, i did learn crooked grinds and that was one of the things with the trick progression that i was telling you guys about i put on a front peg i landed it first try landed a crooked i said that was cool and then after that my front peg kept popping off i don't know what i did differently i don't know what it is but that happens with a lot of tricks and that's a good example for me um grinds are scary man grinds are scary joel berg what's up joel joel is asher's brother i don't see uh i don't see asher in here but i see joel joel and asher did a game of bike against each other i can tell that asher is very competitive and very cutthroat um, I watched it on Asher's channel. It's a, it's a fun little video. I wish I had friends to do a uh, game of bikes with. I could, my brother could with me, but he doesn't ride bikes, so that doesn't work. Um, Aiden guessed on half the test, uh, so he's not getting an A. Yikes. Naya Trujillo says, I used a flatland stem on my setup for Park and Street. Is that something I should continue doing or should I switch to a normal size stem? Um, flatland stems are just really sh low rise and short reach, right? Let me double check. Flatland and racing is one thing that I know absolutely nothing about. Okay, yeah, so it's just like a really short reach and a low rise, um, virtually no rise. So it depends what you want to get out of it. You know, if you love to, let's see, I'll just tell you how the different things affect your riding, Nija. Um, oh, let me pin the comment. God, I'm bad about that. Okay. So basically the reach of your stem pulls your bars farther away from your top tube. So if your bars were right on top of your top tube, it'd be a, a 21. Say you have a 21 inch top tube. 
and it's right on top, it'd be a 21 inch. Now with the reach goes another say 52 millimeters, then that pulls the bars out just a little bit farther, makes it more comfortable for your back. It's just better riding stance altogether. So the flatland bars are closer like this. So it's pretty much right on the forks. Um, and then the rise is how tall it goes. Flatland stem is right here. A lot of BMX stems rise another 30 or 40 if you get a top load. Uh, front loads don't rise that much unless you get that stupid cinema projector. Um, <laughs> I don't like it. But anyway, so that, that rise again for me, I'm able to ride 9.5 inch bars with a steep top load stem that gives me more rise so that it's just better on my back. It feels a lot comfortable. Now, a longer reach makes bar spins harder since it's just wider, the bars come closer to your knees and all that. So that short reach of the flatland stem is gonna make tricks like bar spins easier. But overall, you're just not gonna have the same stability and control that you would um, going high speeds. So imagine you drop into a bowl, right? You're going really fast. That longer reach gives you more stability. So you can turn your bars just a little bit and kind of fine tune your steering. Whereas if it's really short, just a little twitch of your arm snaps that front wheel. And so, I mean, that could be pretty dangerous. You've got to really think about your style of riding. That's why it's designed for flat land, low speeds, flat ground. Um, but little tricks like, you know, bars and, and moving things around real quick work out good on that kind of setup, but not necessarily BMX. Um, but I don't know your style of riding or anything like that. So I hope that helps. That was, that was a pretty good explanation. Lucas says, I'm going to use the sound wave still. I just wanted to have a beater for dirt. So I got the fly air. So my sound wave will stay in good condition. Okay. Okay. I support that, man. Um, we got Matt back in the chat. Hold on, I, I skipped down, I gotta catch back up. Lucas has a really good question here. Kev Sharpshooter, I have not seen Kevin here for a long time. Glad you are back. Oh my God, there's so many good questions. Jigar Ponchel says, what kind of trick should I learn? Because we don't have any skate parks here. I'm a beginner just doing basic hops, fakies, foot jams right now. Um, this is a good thing for all of you guys to comment because we all have something different that we ride. So for me, the flat tricks that I would do when I started is I'd get really good at fakies, bunny hops, 180s, 360s, foot jam tail whips are a really good one. Um, you can work on pull up bars. A lot of kids do X up rides. That's a good flat ground trick to do. Uh, rocket manuals, if you have pegs, that was one of my favorites. You hop back on the back peg and you hold the manual that way. Uh, that one to me is just so, so fun. But one, really stress bunny hops. Get really, really good at bunny hops because that's going to carry you out like with everything that you want to do ever. Um, so yeah, really get good at bunny hops. And then all those tricks that I listed. But you guys in the comments, list which tricks you guys learned flat ground that were pretty easy for you uh, to help out our homie Jigar. 100x Pentakill XD says, what do you think about 310, what? What do you think about 310 black tubes, 25 tube orange BMX? So I think he's asking about the, like, what do I think? Essentially, two bolitos are the orange tubes. Um, they are, I thought they were 50 per tube. Maybe they're 25 now. Um, and then the normal $5 tubes you get from Walmart. Uh, to me, I don't know. I would argue, I would never pay for Tubalitos. That's something that if Tubalitos said, hey, can you test this out for me? Like, we'll give you some, I'd say, sure. And then I'd ride them, but that's it. I know how much they cost from China, and I know that they are charging a ridiculous amount of money for these new tubes that are supposed to be life-changing. And they're very light, but that's about all they have going for them. They, they resist punctures a little bit better, but running a normal tube with slime is still better off than the tubalitos. I've seen a lot of people blow those out or even just get holes. Now you can keep patching them, but that's that's super annoying to have to pull your wheel off, patch your $50 tube, and then keep going. Um, so I don't know. I To me, it's not worth it. There is a lot of weight savings there, and that's why it's such a big deal. But it's, I don't know. I don't know. It's not worth it. If I was going to spend five grand on a bike, go all tie, and just go as light as possible like Ricky Veronic. I'd throw those in because I'm already spending a lot of money, but it's it's not worth it. It's not worth it. 
Um, Black says, what have I missed today? Man, you missed everything. Um, but good news, I was telling this at the beginning, I'm recording this whole thing on my camera. Um, so I'll upload like the 4K version. It'll look really good and really polished. And then um, you can rewatch this and I can make some ad money for uploading a really long video. <laughs> And I think, honestly, guys, these are so helpful for people because I know when I was starting out, there's so many different questions that I had that I could Google and I'd maybe end up on a vital BMX form or something like that. But the answers were just iffy. So I love being able to give you guys solid answers to your questions. And um, yeah, so this is helpful. I love doing these. Uh, Vicky says, if you had to pick a BMX bike, what would it be? Boom. No, just kidding. Um, My favorite bike, if we're talking just like favorite bike, I just did this in the 2021 Bikes That Don't Suck. My number one favorite has got to be the Kink Switch just because it's $500, double wall rims, two pegs, free coasters, full Kermali, Um, And the 20.7 five inch top tube is a really good length for people because it's it's kind of right in the middle. Most riders need either a 21 or a 20.5 so they can make a 20.7 5 inch work. Um, that would be my number one pick. But if we had to go best of all time, it has to be a We the People Envy. Um, I think the quality, it's, it's essentially a fully custom bike for $1,200. So everything on there is aftermarket claw parts with their warranted frame and forks, I think, have lifetime warranty or lifetime guarantee. That would be my pick. Vicky, I forgot to pin your comment, but Joel says, does Asher have his wrench back? Um, Joel, I think I gave it back to him, but I can't remember. Um, I think he he like deleted somebody's comment or something, and <laughs> I had to take it away because he's abusing his wrench power. But I, I feel like I did give it back. I can't remember, though. I haven't seen him in here to uh, to check, so I don't know. Kev Sharpshooter says, yo, Doug, what's up, man? I upgraded my frame to Kink Contender Frame, Dan Collar Signature, and it looks amazing. Have you seen that frame before? Yeah, so I did a review on it, and um, it's it's a really good frame, to be honest. You should send me a picture or tag me in a picture on Dougster Bob on Instagram so that I can check it out because, um, yeah, I'm curious to see it. Which color did you get? Hold on, guys. Smile for the live. Okay. I always post stupid stories <laughs> all the time. And I think my friends hate me, but it's okay because um, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Hold on. I got to post it right now. Okay. Back back to live. Just kidding. Rado. What's up, Rado? Glad you're back. He says, are used BMX parts any good, yo? Um, no. I mean, it depends. It depends, Rado, because some places can get really good used BMX parts uh, from people who are just trying to get rid of them. And then some people can get used BMX parts for from people who are on the verge of breaking them and just trying to dump them off to somebody else. Um, to me, anywhere that I've lived, I've never had a very good used BMX bike like economy. So when I lived in Arizona, the closest big town was like an hour away and you could get used bikes and parts like a handful or uh, not very often, but sometimes they would pop up where I'm at right now in New Mexico. It's virtually nothing. And just because I know all the, all the local riders around me. So if I live somewhere like say Phoenix or Houston or uh, Denver, the used market would be a lot better and you could probably get some solid stuff but just for me anywhere that i lived it's never been very uh very good aaron laird says i use tall order a wall ride tire i rate them really high grade have i ever used them no i have not um tall order when i was in england uh doing like the backyard jams uh sebastian keep right is that who has it i think it's sebastian keeps brand he was there at like all the different contests and i was like i think that guy's like really famous it was, it was cool it was cool to see but um that brand is very popular over there you're in england too so it's a really popular brand there here it's not so much i think maddie kramer's doing stuff with tall order 
and making it a little more popular, but it still hasn't really caught on. Um, Lucas says, Yo, Doug, in your opinion, would you prefer a Fly Air or a Sunday Soundwave? Soundwave is a lighter frame, but the chain stays 13.5, but the Air has a 13.8. I own both. Lucas, um, you got a lot of bikes, man. So I would still, for me, I'd say the Soundwave is better. 13.8 inch chain stay seems like so much. But then again, it's designed for dirt. So with dirt riding, you want to have a long, stable chain stay so that your bike is nice and controlled. And 13.5 on the Soundwave is still a very long chain stay to me. I like ride it maybe 13 inch, 13.2, because I'm more of a technical rider. I like to snap my bike around and do lots of spins and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not very good at dirt. It scares me. Uh, <laughs> when I went to film some videos in California, we, we went to a dirt park and there's like a big line, but then there's like a big line. And I stayed far away from the big line. I just did the, the not so big, big line. It, looking at the jumps, you get up there and you look at them and you're like, yo those are huge but then you see people hit them it doesn't look that bad um granted if i rode a bike with a bigger top tube and a bigger chain stay it would probably be a lot easier to flow those and control it so for you i mean it sounds like you know exactly what you're doing man 13.8 inch chain stay on the dirt 13.5 inch chain stay everywhere else keep the bike clean not so dirty um yeah no for me though i'd pick the sound wave for sure even though I love the fly bikes, 13.8 is too big. I'm not comfortable on that. Bypaths. What's up, Bypaths? Glad you are here. He says, Max is 2.1 or 2.3s. So I love the 2.3 inch tires. This is something we, uh, Nick and I were just talking about. Uh, it's like, it's called your, what is it? Your fork clearance. Anyway, tire clearance. It's how much of a space goes in between your tire and the top part of your forks. So 2.3s are going to be bigger and they're going to fill up that space a lot more so that you can get foot jams in there without ripping off your toe or your toenail. I love the bigger tires, just how they grip, how they feel uh, and look. I used to ride 2.2s and since I started riding 2.3s, it's just been a lot better overall. So I'm going to say 2.3s all the way. Um, I'm just reading these comments. If I see a question, I will stop. I'm sorry you guys have to just stare at me while I just read and, and not say anything. <laughs> I'm going to drink some water, actually. Guys, we've been going for 51 minutes. Again, I'm so sorry that I was late. Um, I messed up. I put in 10 o'clock instead of 11. If that ever happens again, it's it's 11. I, I was really sleepy. I probably messed up, but it shouldn't happen again. Matt. What's up, Matt? I've seen you in here before. Okay. Hey, Doug. Wondering about stem reach. 50 millimeter seems typical, but some others like Sunday Freeze at 48. Does a shorter reach make for easier bar spins and steering response? What exactly? So I think you typed that in, Matt, after I went on that big, long spiel about the flatland stem. So I'm pretty sure the flatland stem explanation answered that for you. Really good question, though, because the stem, there's like two or three things that are really overlooked. The stem reach, the crank arm length, that's something that's wildly overlooked, and the offset of your forks. Those are three things that people don't understand and just overlook. I got these lights and, and I feel so fancy, but it hurts my eyeballs. <laughs> By the end of the live, I'm like, uh. Um, Mason Krause says, yo, update on getting my new free coaster. I love it. Mason, I'm stoked to hear that, man. Uh, it's, it's a love-hate thing with those free coasters. I have pretty much all my friends ride free coaster. I'm the only one on a cassette. And I have fun jumping on the free coaster from time to time, but I would never, 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 uh, like primarily ride one. Um, we're at 17 likes. Thank you guys. But can we do 20 because I don't like 17. It's just a weird number. Uh, okay. We're at 18. Appreciate you. Whoever did that. Thank you. Um, you guys are so dope. 
Prithvi says, they closed the skate park from, oh, the closest skate park from my house is super nice, but it's 30 minutes away, so resorted to street. Prithvi, that is rough, but you're going to be a much better rider overall from learning on street and then riding the skate park. Um, I have friends who only ride the skate park and they can like double whip and do crazy, crazy skate park tricks, but they're like, how do you manual? I'm like, what do you mean? How do you manual? Like what, what kind of question is that? <laughs> so I don't know. To me, it's like, you need to be really well-rounded at everything you do and riding street. Like instead of looking at it as a negative man, look at it as a positive. So by riding street, you're getting the opportunity to focus on different tricks that you wouldn't be able to focus on if you rode only the skate park. So look at it that way. And then when you get to ride the skate park, you're going to feel a lot more like a lot more blessed. Black187 says, I need, oh, I forgot to pin Prithvi's comment. I need brakes. If the police get me without, they take my bike. Where are you at? That's insane. I've never heard of that. Um, that's crazy. <laughs> I'd be super upset if the police stole my bike. Um, so yeah, keep your brakes on, man. Don't get, don't get your, uh, <laughs> don't get your bike stolen. Denzel Scott. What's up, man? Says, bro, urgent. I switched my cranks to left-hand drive, but did I need to flip the bearing or should they be fine? What? <laughs> so I think what you mean is like you your cranks imagine they're like this you took off this one took off this one put this one on put this one on um if that's the case no th that's fine um hold on hold on no no you keep your cranks the same you take your sprocket take your crank off take your sprocket off put your crank on take your other crank off put your sprocket on put your other crank on um you don't need to do anything with like bearings or anything just leave that all the same but here's the thing if you take your right crank and you put it on the left side, the pedals are threaded so that as you pedal, the pedals tighten. So if you put your left crank arm on, on the right side, which is possible, your pedal is going to be unscrewing as you pedal. And that's super annoying uh, for obvious reasons. So make sure that you didn't do that and that you just switched your sprocket over. If you can't switch your sprocket over, you need left-hand drive cranks with a boss that's going to hold that sprocket there. Brian Valencia. Oh, Brian, good question. Are profile hubs worth the investment for street use? Yes. Um, I ride profile minis because I'm way too poor to ride profile elites. Profile minis are... I've had these hubs for four years now, I want to say, and they're fine. I grind. I do street tricks. Uh, I'm not a crazy, crazy street rider. But I do, like I grind handrails, put them under a lot of stress, and surprisingly, they are, they're, they're great. Um, now, I have a female axle in the front and a male axle in the back, so I don't think I would run a 3 8 female axle in the back if you're planning to grind because those snap, or would not run any, like, titanium axles with the profiles. But other than that, dude, they are great hubs. If you can afford the elites, even better. <laughs> Yeah, look, Lucas says I got the Elite and the Mini, and I love them. They they really are. Profile is, I have a good amount of Profile and Colony on my bike, and this bike has lasted me so long. It's uh, it's honestly, it's amazing. Oh, I just saw a good question, but then I skipped all the way to the bottom. Um, I'm going to start just skipping around on these questions and not answer everyone in a line. If I see a good question, I'll stop and answer it. Um, but you guys are got me way, 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 way behind on these comments. Um, oh, it was a good, good question too. Oh well. Oh well. Okay. Wait. No. It, essentially, the question was that, that is Ty worth it? Um, and to me, I thought, yes, I was like, you can save so much weight by switching to titanium and it's, it's a good idea. And then, so what I did when I built my bike is I did tie spokes and I did a tie spindle. So I did profile cranks with a tie spindle. The spindle saves a ridiculous amount of weight on its own and compounded over 48 spokes. Tie spokes save a good amount of weight too. 
one thing on that is its rotational weight so the way your wheel weighs when it's spinning is different than how it weighs not spinning so rotational weight is huge for tail whips bar spins 360s 1080s all that stuff so cutting out rotational weight wherever you can is, is a good move but tie is so expensive so back to my story i bought titanium spindle with my cranks and i had them for maybe a year and i snapped it i didn't this one i bent this one i bent it um and so then my bike was just wonky i pulled it off i rolled it i looked i said oh this is bent so i bought one uh coco zarita at woodward had an extra one he sold me so i put that on and that one snapped clean in half after about another year um so i don't know profile has a warranty on everything except a freaking tight 200 titanium spindle which is super upsetting i was like yo i broke this they're like well since they don't ever break then we don't have a warranty i'm like but but i i literally just broke it like eh, it doesn't happen very so anyway they were useless and i don't know i i'd i say yes if you have the money go ahead and go all out if you don't it's not worth it does that make sense all right guys i'm so sorry if i miss your question because i am going to start skipping around i have to cook lunch right now but i'm going to stay i'm going to answer some more questions uh i literally love hanging out with you guys i i want to do these more but i don't have time soon i'll be able to focus on this primarily and uh do more with dugster bob okay so I love BMX, hadn't noticed yet. At this part in the chat, he didn't have his wrench, but I gave it to him a little while ago. So he will probably type in and then notice. Um, that's funny, let's see, let's see. Brian, okay, Brian, Brian says, oh, we got another question from Brian. Brian is taking full advantage of the lives and uh, answering your BMX questions. Hey Doug, could you please give me some advice on Colony and Cinema wheel sets? I'm trying to decide between them. Um. I don't know anything about colony wheel sets. I would have to like look at it. Um, but cinema that that is what they do and that's what they're known for. So I really like without looking into it very much, I would say go with the cinema and let or yeah, the cinema unless it's like a colony mixed with cinema. In that case, that's even better because like I said, I ride colony a lot. I have a lot of colony parts on my bike and I love it so much because they're, they've lasted so long. Um, but cinema is best. I, I don't know. Cinema and Odyssey, I'd say, are probably the two best options for wheels. And uh, yeah, let's see what kind of rim it's on. Oh, this is a single wall rim. Anyway, that that's my opinion on it. Okay. Oh, look, here's a. I love BMX posting with his wrench. Dakota Brat popped into the live. What's up, Dakota? Um, Dakota was over here in New Mexico and then he did not want to hang out with me. Very, very upsetting, Dakota. I miss you and I was excited to ride bikes. I hope your friend's foot is okay. They were over here, I guess he broke his foot. So homeboy flew back to California. Dakota flew back to, to Colorado and did not get the sesh. Um, but anyway, what's up, Dakota? <laughs> Owen says, how much is it to custom a BMX bike? There's not a lot of complete bikes that I like. Owen, you are going to look, you will probably not spend any less than $1,000. You can make one work for seven to 800 if you strictly shop off like the clearance section. But I would say, honestly, man, just look for something um get what you want you can do a couple of different things with this some companies have like a a credit system so you buy everything you pay monthly for it or you can pay monthly until you hit the threshold that you need to buy the bike and then you buy it um i would recommend doing something like that because that's something if you're going to spend say 700 dollars on a cheap custom and, and skimping out on parts you might as well spend the extra three, four hundred and get something that's really, really good that you're gonna love and that's gonna last you for a long time. It's something like, like I did this before with a camera, okay? I was like, well, I could get this camera, but I could get this one, which I think will do what I need it to do. I bought that one, it did not do what I wanted it to do. I returned it, I had to pay a hundred dollar restocking fee just to return it. 
And like at that point, I could have just spent a couple extra hundred dollars and gotten the right one that would work for me. And it's kind of the same for the complete bike. Um, it's going to be, or the custom bike, it's going to be very expensive, but that's something you don't really want to mess around with on quality. So, yeah. Um, what else do we have here, guys? Joel Berg says, I like street. I'm scared of park, though. I got hurt at one once, and I don't even remember it happening. Joel, that, that's kind of spooky. Um, I think I knocked myself out once riding street. When I was younger, I'd, I tried to alley-oop 180 off a curb, and then I hit my head. And um, I don't think I've ever knocked myself out at the park, but I've gotten pretty messed up at the park. And I don't think, Joel, I don't think it's necessarily that, like, park is more dangerous, but I think it's more so that at a park, it's like you're in a different environment. You've got people's vibes that you're feeling off of and everyone's progressing each other you have different obstacles so you're more sendy and so therefore you you hook it a lot harder than you do when you're just kind of hanging out riding street by yourself so um i love bmx says who are you sponsored by doug i'm sponsored by dougster bob um and you know last year the this clothing company swifty and i kind of worked together and then COVID happened and we uh i mean i still tag them in my videos here and there but we didn't we don't really do too much other than that that's like that's it um he, my thing with sponsors is maybe this is sounds cocky but at one point i felt like i was really i really was good enough to get sponsored and progress as a rider and i just didn't and there's a lot of a, a thing that it's more so about the people you know so if i lived in a different area I'd have a lot easier time, but I don't, and I'm okay with that. Like, it's not an excuse. I could be a lot better for sure, but what I decided is like, look, I'm just gonna create my own thing, and the idea with Dugster Bob is to build up a community, a website, everything that you guys need to become better, and in turn, hopefully, I want that to be able to pay me enough so that I can travel and ride bikes just like a pro bike rider would, and I have, I've, Honestly, over the last two years, I've had way more fun building this and interacting with everyone than I have like actually trying to to progress. Like to be top rider where you're sponsored and everything, you have to spend five hour days at the park constantly progressing, trying things that scare you. And that's tough. That That's really tough. Like I was there for a little bit and it's hard. It's really hard life. You hurt yourself. You're out for six months. You get depressed because you can't ride like that is tough and those riders that deal with that man they they deserve way more than they're getting way more than they're getting isaac says what do you think of stranger oh this is controversial controversial topic isaac i think i think stranger is good i had stranger haze bars i had a couple stranger parts i loved them um, and then Stranger did that Adam LZ thing, and then everyone hated Stranger after that. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny because it, there's a lot of different things you can learn from it, and Stranger definitely shot themselves in the foot when they did that, and I think they learned their lesson. I can't remember the guy's name. There's a podcast called Im Imprimature, and they talk about um, it just kind of – it's just real deep BMX discussions. Rich Hurst, that's his name. So Mike Hinkin, the brand manager for Profile and Madeira, there was a lot of drama about him about a year ago. Um, he did an interview with Rich, and they kind of talked about that. And Rich says, I thought it was a good move at the time, but I learned my lesson. Um, he's done a lot for BMX, has a lot of BMX history. But Stranger as a brand, I don't think they're really focused on like innovative innovating bmx like we the people is they are the, we the people's always coming up with new things better things stranger is just kind of piggybacking off of what's already out there and trying to build a brand from the brand aspect um so yeah that's my thought on stranger good parts though good parts don't get me wrong vicky kennedy says i really want a wrench it's my dream but i don't have one um vicky kennedy here's what you do hold on hold on hold on hold on um yeah i don't know i i hope 
like if you guys if people start blocking comments and all that stuff with the wrenches then i'll just take them all away and i think 90 percent of the people in the lives would hate me if i did that but it's i this is stressful just uh filming the lives if i had to do like deal with all that man uh all right vicky kennedy i just posted a link in the chat um it looks like a pretty good wrench on amazon you can pop over there and you can get that <laughs> just kidding that was kind of mean um yeah, keep hanging out in the lives. I uh, I have no problem giving out the wrenches, but uh, you got to be like the people that get the wrenches usually. So like if somebody asks a question, you see Marvin answer, you see Isaac answer, you see those guys like they're helping out other people with their questions. And that's what I really want from my wrench people is to to contribute to it more so um, help, help me out with answering the questions and just uh, be a part of the community. So um all right i'm i skip me to the bottom i'm gonna read like two more questions and then uh and then that's it guys if you guys have more after i publish this video pop a comment on there and i'll get to it in the next live but let's see let's see what do we have here what do we have here black says it's sad that we all live in different countries not a question but it is sad and uh once corona's over we we all need to like Dunkster Bob, I'm going to do a, like a meet somewhere. We're going to go to a, a really cool BMX spot. We're going to all go ride bikes and, and uh, kill it. So <laughs> Dakota Brat says, do I need to run low PSI to hop higher? Um, Dakota Brat, like, I think it's 150 PSI of helium is how you hop higher. Um, <laughs> get out of here, Dakota. Just kidding. I miss you. Um Brian says, thank you, Doug. Love your vids and your advice. Pleasure is mine, Brian. Pleasure is mine. Um, I say on um a lot. I'm sorry, guys. It, it's better than you know. Last last live, I was talking about saying you know or you know. And I was like, I need to stop that. So. Alrighty, last one. Dirt Racer X says, my foot is hitting the rear peg with 170 millimeter cranks. Should I try to adjust my style so my foot doesn't hit as much or should I buy 160 millimeter cranks? Um, there's like, there's two things you can do, Dirt Racer, is you can, one, go with 160 millimeter cranks. Two, you can move your chainstay, your, your wheel back a little more. So in your chainstay, like imagine this is your chainstay, okay? And you have your wheel tightened right here in the center you can move your wheel out to here and that gives you a little bit more clearance also. So try both of those things out. Um, if your foot is not, like your foot should be, imagine this is your, your pedal. Your foot, this is your, these are your toes. Your foot should be like right here. So if you're riding like way back here, that's gonna affect you too. Your foot should be more so like right here. Um, alrighty guys, that is, uh, I think that's good guys. I am, having so much fun with this, but I'm going to pop off. I'm going to quit the camera and start it uploading over here to my computer and cook some chicken. Um, guys, I hope you guys are able to get out, ride bikes this weekend because it's Valentine's Day. We all love our bikes. So uh, spend it with the one you love and do lots of BMX tricks. If you guys have any questions, you can hit me up on Instagram or whatever. Uh, I'm excited for the new quality of these videos and I'm excited for you guys to be a part of the community. Have a great day, guys. Peace.